Hey, Deutsch, you saw Michael Cohen yesterday. Um, what, it, what are your takeaways? And um, there are some ways in which he's still cooperating yeah. with uh, sort of on the outskirts of all of this. What's his mindset? Oh, well, speaking of cooperating, um, Cy Vance, his people have been up there a number of times. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting. I don't know how parallel these stories are going to go as far yeah. as his taxes, but, uh, you know, Michael hinted at some of his earlier testimonies. And I, I think the most damning thing that would come up in the taxes is basically inflation and deflation of assets for tax purposes, which would be tax fraud. Basically, to get a loan, you say something's worth 100 million, and for income, you say something's worth 2 million. Uh, that would be against the law. You know, seeing Michael is, first of all, very sad. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what also, you know, I, he said one thing yesterday. He, saw, he said, you know, people ask me, why'd you do what you did? Would you do, you know, and he goes, I don't know. And to me, the, the interesting thing is, I wonder if years from now, Mike Pompeo, various Republican senators are going to be saying the same thing. I'm not saying they're going to end up in jail, but Trump's effect on people and getting them to do things. Uh, and I think years from now, a lot of these people are going to look back and the toxicity, the same way it's affected Michael, um, is going to affect them. You know, there is, he's frustrated. Yeah. He feels he's in jail for doing something on behalf of somebody at the direction for the benefit of somebody. And that's somebody that unindicted co-conspirator is Donald Trump, of course. And Donald Trump and everybody else still still runs free. You know, his days are it's not hard time. Uh, it's but he's bored. He's lonely. He's frustrated, isolated, uh, isolated. You know, it is really depressing when you go up there and basically, you know, his day he reads, he works out. He does some work with the HVAC, um, obviously. Uh, Hopefully there'll be some more time off if the Prison Reform Act goes finally goes through and gets uh, uh, goes into real life. Uh, but it's easy. You know, we see Michael Cohen in a little box up there when you put, oh, here are the people affected by Trump and yeah. he's going to jail for three years and you forget it's a life. And obviously he broke the law and he's doing his time, but how it affects his family. And uh, I, I was just really sad yesterday, but he's hanging in there. He's doing the best he can, but it sucks. Is he, is he still involved in, like, to, to what extent can you say that he's still involved in any ongoing investigations? Well, he has, it's been reported that Cy Vance's people have been yeah, out there. I mean, so how, I mean, how much of his time, how, how involved is, I'm trying to get to the... Uh, he's spent uh, some decent amount of time with them. Right, and uh, I think he will continue to spend time with them. He, of course, wouldn't tell me what he's talking about. And is that about trying to get his sentence reduced, or is that just about trying to... Well, he's, by them? the way, there's no... There's quid, I know there's a big word, quid pro quo out there. There's been no quid pro quo established. Yeah. Obviously, in any cooperation, I'm sure that's what he's hoping for. But nothing has been promised. But uh, look, Cy Vance is the last stand. Obviously, 30 or 40 days after Barr came in, mm, yeah. those, those open investigations from the Trump organization from the uh, Southern District suddenly stopped and went away. Uh, Cy Vance is obviously under a different uh, tutelage and be interesting to watch. Yeah. you got Paul Manafort, Michael Flynn. There's staggering stories here that you know, it's hard to keep it all straight. Uh, Josh Gerstein, uh, uh, Roger Stone, remind us, where are we with that? Well, Mika, this is sort of a reprise, you know, five months after the Mueller investigation shut down, all of a sudden we find uh, one of President Trump's top confidants getting ready to go on trial in federal court here in Washington mm -hmm. uh, for seven different uh, felonies. And what's interesting about this case is it's really the first one stemming from the Mueller probe that goes to the heartland of that investigation. Whether Paul Manafort did pay his taxes, didn't pay his taxes, failed to register as a foreign agent is still a little bit at the margins of what Mueller was really investigating. Uh, whereas this uh, trial of Roger Stone is about whether he lied about efforts he was making on <laughs> Trump's behalf or the Trump campaign's behalf uh, to be in touch with WikiLeaks and to try to procure release of Hillary Clinton's emails and Democrats' emails at the height of the 2016 campaign. So he's not charged with conspiring with WikiLeaks, but he's charged with lying about issues that, as I say, are really at the core of the Mueller investigation. Josh, there's so much going on in the orbit of President Trump, and you're good at synthesizing all this, which you've got the Roger Stone trial, which you're covering. You've got what's going on with the impeachment inquiry. You've got what's going on in, in the Southern District of New York. How much of this, just for people waking up and watching at home, comes close to touching the president of the United States or could touch or impact the president of the United States as he approaches a, an election, a re-election campaign a year from now? Is there any chance that he will be mired personally in any of this? 
Well, I think he's certainly going to be referred to. Uh, jurors are being told that this case has something to do with Trump. Uh, we expect some testimony, at least on the Roger Stone uh, front, about a conversation that took place with Rick Gates and somebody on the phone in the back of a limo uh, with then-candidate Trump, where he was told in advance uh, about the planned release of some of these uh, Clinton or Democratic uh, email. So we do expect the president's name to be um, invoked at the trial, whether it's something that'll, you know, he'll have to pay a political price for, you know, six months from now or a year from now. I think we'll have to wait and see. Dave, Donnie Deutsch, going back to uh, the tax returns and, you know, what Trump has showed us is there are new norms. Let's assume that either the court doesn't hear the case or it upholds. Is there any other move for Trump? I mean, it, we see that the unthinkable happens with him at that point. Can he have any domain over the accounting firm or that's game over at that point? Donnie, it's going to be game over, but keep in mind that even if the Manhattan DA gets a hold of Trump's tax returns, they're still subject to grand jury secrecy laws unless they're used as evidence in a criminal case. So it's possible that even if and when the Manhattan DA wins that the public may not see these tax returns anytime soon. But I can say that this is different than the normal tactic of Trump's legal team to delay. This is not going to extend past the 2020 elections. Because of an agreement between Trump's legal team and the Manhattan DA's office, they have an expedited calendar. The Manhattan DA agreed to it, not to enforce the subpoenas until the Supreme Court rules, but they must rule this term. And that means you'll see a decision by mid-January by the Supreme Court whether to hear the case. You'll then have an oral argument argument no later than April, and then ultimately a decision by June 2020, which is the expiration of the Supreme Court's term. So this is the kind of stuff that could, mm -hmm. although no guarantee, could come out in the heat of the election. Wow. And following up on that point, um, people I've talked to in the West Wing and who people who speak to the president regularly, despite everything else that's going on, he is closely watching the tax returns matter. That is something that's very much still at the forefront of his mind. Uh, Josh, I have a question for you. Uh, Willie laid out all the number of things going on. I wanted to add one more plate to your one more question thing to your plate. Rudy Giuliani. Uh, who is reportedly under investigation, but in particular, talk to us about his associate, Lev Parmas, who yesterday indicated that he'll be complying with the House investigation. What does that mean for Giuliani and, the pre and potentially the president? Well, it's not good news for Giuliani or the president. Uh, Parnas is making this kind of outreach to Capitol Hill and saying, look, I'm willing to work with you guys. I have to say, though, it's a little murky to me how we get uh, from him being interested in cooperating to actually cooperating. For somebody who's under, currently under indictment like Lev Parnas uh, is, uh, it's difficult for you to go up to Capitol Hill and just sort of talk freely uh, about those issues, like the dealings with the State Department or other officials uh, about trying to oust the um, ambassador to Ukraine, for example. Uh, very difficult for him to speak about that on Capitol Hill while facing a criminal indictment. But it is notable that at least uh, one of Parnas's attorneys uh, is interested in pursuing that route. There could potentially maybe be an offer of congressional uh, immunity, but I think the shift in strategy here is probably more notable uh, than any chance that Parnas is going to start singing soon. If he wants to sing, it's best for him to sing to the federal prosecutors, really, uh, before he tries to work something out on Capitol Hill. Oh, my goodness. Politico's Josh Gerstein and state attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Ehrenberg, thank you both. Uh, Donnie, Thanks, thank Nika. you as well. You look at this all. Like, look at what we just talked about in the past six minutes. Uh, all these moving parts <laughs> from his tax returns, Michael Cohen, Lev Parnas, Roger Stone, uh, Karen McDougal, Stormy Daniels, possible payments uh, that are campaign finance violations, and the growing mountain of evidence surrounding the Ukraine scandal. And you've got this president and his Fox News hosts talking about one thing, the whistleblower. And you get a sense of just like that seems unbelievably silly. What's and unbelievable <laughs> is, the, is the Republicans. Is yeah. the Republicans that they stand by as men and women and they go home to their families. And trash people. And they face their children and their day will come. Their day will come. This is a moment in time. History will, will, will judge them accordingly.